Hey folks, Todd here, and welcome to another Acme Machining. I'd like to start off today by uh, saying thank you for all the viewers, the folks that subscribe and like. It makes a big difference in the channel, it really makes me feel good about uh, doing these, and uh, positive comments I've been getting, so I'd like to thank you for that. But uh, today, what we've got is we have an axle out of a four wheel drive tractor that uh, the ball joint has seen some neglect. So, this is the axle assembly. I just got it sitting on my cherry picker because it weighs about 600 pounds. But you can see that cupped race. It's a spherical cup and uh, about a third of it is missing and there's a whole bunch of wear going on in there so I've got to get that cup out and what I'm going to use is a slide puller for removing pallet bearings so that should work I'll get that set up and I'll bring it right back okay let's see if we have any luck here lots of luck just what we want So I've got some cleaning to do down here, and uh, then I'll bring you back. Okay folks, so I flipped this on its side right now, and what I've done is, I just, I use these body, body shop sanding pads, and I just clean up the surface a little bit. Now I'm not, there's still some witness marks in there, so I haven't taken off any major material. But what I want to do is, I got to find a reference for where my top is going to be. So I've got my 12 inch Starrett vignette here. And all I'm doing is not real worried about the measurement. I'm just worried about parallel. So I'm looking, I'm keeping parallel there. I got parallel there. I can get down. You can only reach so many places. But it's just to make sure that this surface is, even though this has got some scars on it, is parallel to that surface. So what I can do now is I'm going to take and I'm going to use this as a mounting surface on the mill and I'm going to start working on the other end. So I'll just flip this over quickly here and give you a handheld shot of what the other end is looking like. Now I can tell somebody's been in there with a welder and that there does not want to come out. I'm going to take a chisel to it and see if it'll move at all. But uh, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up taking this out to, oh, excuse me, to this larger diameter because it doesn't look like it's taking too much over in this area. So I'm going to set it up on the mill. I'm going to find a, a center on this by looking at excuse me this point to this point and this point so if I get the radius across here and touch it to here that should leave me a center so I can start working and I'm going to clean all that out and then I'm going to make a bushing I'm going to leave the bottom the way it is because that should be a good height but I'm going to uh, well I'll look at it when I get going but I'm going to make a bushing on the lathe and then we'll take it from there so the next thing you're going to see is this thing sitting up on the mill so wish me luck okay just to give you an idea of what it takes to get something like this up on the milling machine 
I've got it suspended. I've got it uh, just off the welding table. I got to take the welding table out of there because it's a little bit high. So, uh, and what I've done is I took one of my uh, large press plates that I've got for my press and I put it on the milling machine. Cleaned it up with a fall, of course, because I don't want to scar the tables with any jagged edges. But uh, don't go trying to mount something like this right to the deck of your milling machine because it'll look old in a hurry. But you can see there that uh, my angle that face is quite a bit off, so I've got to lower this end. So I'm going to pull the welding table out and uh, get this lowered down just a little bit and. We'll bring you back when we get closer. So, got to play safe. Okay, I'm going to start with a close-up shot. And this is the 1000 shim stock feeler gauge. I picked up the other week and it does not go in there. That is the face that I uh, just gave a very light sanding to and it looks to be parallel without getting very very specific and now I'm going to back you away from this. Now don't laugh folks but it's there. I'm not taking the cherry picker away. I've got it sitting on some 60 liter pails. I don't know what you guys call them in the States. But I guess they were 22 and a half liter or 22 and a half gallon before we went metric. But now they're 60 liter pails, some three quarter inch plywood and two three ton jack stands. So that'll hold that. And I've got a clamp in the back. Excuse the light, I was just using the light to see what I could get things leveled off. And right now, with that leveled off, I can't remove that from the hole. Now the interesting thing now is I can't move the bed to find center of this part. So that's the nice thing about having a Bridgeport type milling machine is the top of this move. So I am going to uh, try to get you guys set up so you can see some of this. But the, w the way these are, anybody that's had one of these, is it rotates around this center pivot. Okay. You can see a bolt. I'm going to zoom in here. There is one of four. Also, you can see that big dovetail wedge. It lets me bring the head of the machine uh, out away from it or in towards it. So, we're going to do what we have to. We're going to get set up. We're going to find center on this as best we can and we're going to go from there. So I'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay folks, hopefully you guys can see. Now what I've got, I've got the machine in neutral and I'm just looking here. I've got it. Now this is the room edge. Okay, so I'm going to ignore that. I don't have too much damage here so I should be able to pick up there. I should be able to pick up there and there. So if I get half of the arc of the circle in, I'll be fine. So right now I've got about an eighth of an inch. I've moved this machine around a little bit. And I'm just going to snug these up because I don't want it moving too much. Go 
about a sixteenth of an inch there. Got about a sixteenth of an inch there. And I'm almost touching. So, what I can do is, I'm bumping the whole head of the machine this way. Now I'll just crank this head out just a little bit, if I can find the hole. I have about a sixteenth, I have about nothing, and I have about nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump the machine that way just a little bit. Give it about a 30 second there. I got about a 30 second there. And I don't have a 30 second there so I'm going to see if I can bump back just a little bit. this forward. That there is just, you can hear it, but it's nothing to be concerned of. My table is fully locked down here. Move that light out of the way so I can swing by here. Sorry about my arm. Just the damaged area. Got a little bit of damage right here, right here. All kinds of lips you can feel with your finger. But I'm gonna have to say I'm happy to start somewhere. I don't know if you guys can see that area or not. Yeah, you can see how that's beat down there. So, just looking at, almost got contact there. Got a little bit of contact there. So you make contact and you lose contact. That's because it's beat up. Gotta call that happy for now. 
So what I've got to do is I've got to tighten up six bolts. So the head of the machine is fixed. Okay, I've come handheld here just so I can show you guys. There's these two bolts. They have twins over the other side. This here tightens up the uh, oh, what do you call it? There's a wedge in the dovetail, and uh, as you can see here, I've taken and I've turned. By loosening off these four bolts, these two and the two on the other side, I can just bump it over by hand. And you can see I've bumped it over not quite two degrees. Okay? Now this whole top will spin around if I want it to. Okay? You can put accessories on the back. And another thing is, you notice these big gear teeth right here. This here one engages those teeth so I can take and I can move this back and forth wherever I want it and that's what I had to do because once I had this fixed on that table I can't get it to drag all that with it okay so it's got to be held down in a way that we can work with it okay so now I'm going to get you back in the tripod and we will uh, start working on this Hopefully you get to see a lot of it. It's a, it's a tight spot. I'm just going to back out here so you guys can see what I got going on. I'm already kicking things over. So yeah, it's a big piece of equipment and it makes it tight to work, but uh, I'm not throwing that out. I'm trying to make Brian Block uh, proud of me for doing this one, so we'll see. He's got a lot of huge machines to work on this stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have the room or the machines, but we'll get her done. That's all that matters. Okay, folks, I measured up the uh, height of the conical bearing that's going in there. And uh, it's just under uh, 0.6 of an inch. So I took a 0.6 of an inch gauge block and I set it in on the bottom of, I just did a test cut there off camera and what I did is I set my auto feed up uh, I'm only taking uh, 1.5 thou per revolution but uh, it's taking and I think it's gonna do good it's uh, because of the way I'm holding it and everything I don't want to go crazy don't want to take a big cut I'm just gonna take like 15 thou at a time, something like that, and uh, make this whole round again. So I'll set you up on the tripod and see where we get to. Okay, folks, I'll bring you along for a cut here. I'm not going to show you every cut because you're going to get bored and go to sleep and go on to something else. So. going to be rinse and repeat that a hundred times. Seems like it's pretty hard in there. They've done some welding before so I'm going to just keep on taking baby cuts and get this job done. Okay just to give you a little update here. Getting cut about three quarters of the way around just got to get rid of that holiday there. Okay folks, bring you in for another update. We actually have a diameter there. We're all the way around, but all we got to do is uh, continue to clean up some of that holiday as much as we can. So we're getting there. At least we got a diameter again. So instead of an egg, we just got to, like I said, clean that up and then we'll start making a bushing for it. Okay folks. The only holiday we got is that little one up at the top now, but that's not going to matter. 
what I'll do is I'll put some uh, bearing retainer in when I put this sleeve in so that'll definitely seal up there and uh, we're gonna have to cut a recess for the seal and the conical bearing so uh, we're gonna go over to the lathe here soon first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this on the floor because I want it in a safe location before I go in for the night so we'll bring you back in a little bit so there it is with the old bearing races in uh, that piece there actually looks like a bearing race not the conical bearing that it was supposed to be but I will get the uh, piece that's supposed to be in there and now we just got to make a bushing to make that fit so over to the lathe we go okay folks we got a piece of 1018 up here in the lathe and uh, I got it chucked up in an end that's a little bit just undersized I wish that was 40 thou bigger it would have been perfect so but uh, we're just gonna take some cuts off of this and get it down to size It's warm so I'm gonna let it cool down and then we'll uh, see where we're at okay folks we're half a thou off so we're gonna we want a little bit of press fit in there so now what we got to do is we have to uh, drill a hole in there we're going to be going uh, about 800 deep total so not very far I'll drill in an inch because I'm going to be parting it off 
uh, the total width or depth of this hole, like from here to here, is 0.867. So, and then that leaves me uh, 60 thou bottom in that uh, bore that we cut out on the mill. So, I'm going to get set up and uh, do some drilling and then some boring. Hopefully, I won't bore you guys to death. Okay, I'm going to start out with the centering bit here. And then I'm going to jump up to a 5.8. I'm going to end up with a 1 inch hole in here. Gonna slow that down to 60 RPM. Yeah, we're going to get some oil going here. drill bit bounce around a little bit. Doesn't matter for what I'm doing because I'm going into a boring application afterwards. If you use step your drills up one size at a time, it uh, won't do that jump around so you get a better hole but once it gets a bite jump around. It's because I had a nice pollock started there for it. So. Stop cranking every now and then it shortens up your trips too. The only thing is you got to make sure that you don't have the material that's work hardening like stainless. Like pressure on it all the time because as soon as you back off, it starts work hardening, and then you got more work to do. There, we found the bottom of that. We're just over an inch deep, so that is good. So, I'm gonna get set up to do some boring and uh, then we'll get things cut out to size. So, try to find a good spot for you guys to see what's going on. Set this up to 220 RPMs. Just gonna touch 
Watch off. Setting the little dial indicator up. Taking big cuts. I don't want things to go screwy on me, so two hundred. Three hundred. Just count my dial indicator. Four hundred. Five hundred. Six hundred. Seven hundred. We got a ways to go. We got a ways to go. Slow and steady wins the race. We're going to two inch zero four six. So. We're going to be a lot. Okay, I'll give you a shot of this dial indicator in action. There's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700 and I stop it shy of 8 and I just walk it up by hand so there I'll bring you back when we get close okay we're getting close so we're getting the inside mic out Just shy of uh, 218 or 2018, and we're going to 2046. So I am just going to take uh, some baby steps here because uh, it is warm. I don't care if it shrinks because I'm going to want a little bit of a press fit there anyway. So.
Here we are, we're at 2029. Another very late cut. Check that right there. That should have us at uh, 412041. So, another thing, if we want to cheat, we can try fitting that, and it don't fit, so we know we're not two size yet. And 5000 is a little bit too tight for that, so Let's finish up this cup. Take a coffee break and uh, let it cool down. Fourth under. Five under. Six under. Seven under. Okay, I see a couple people, uh, Maddie, Maddie's Workshop, and uh, Max Grant, Swan Valley Machine Shop, over in Australia, and using bore gauges. So, what I've got here is I'm just miking the bearing that's going in there. I locked it. And then I come over to my bore gauge and I set my micrometer on my bore gauge. And you want it to set it to the smallest increment that you get. And you guys can't, I don't know if you can see that doll or not, you'll have to take my word, but it is on zero. So now when this gauge reads zero it's the exact fit to this. Try to zoom you in here on that. And you can see that I have about six thou left to go on there. So, bar gauges are real nice, but you can't just take them out of the box and say you know how to use it. You got to play with it. But that's how I set a bar gauge. There are setting gauges, but uh, be ready to take a thousand dollar bill out of your pocket. But. Uh, I'm going to do the last cut here and uh, I'll bring you back. Okay folks, once you set these, zero is your hero and you go for your bigger readings don't matter, you're just not, you can see I'm not parallel with the lathe, so I'm not perpendicular to the hole, so. And we are like tenths because that there is one thou and we are just a couple tenths over 
That wants to stay there on its own. So. Now what I have to do is I have to put a groove for the seal because the seal sits in here. And that there is going to go down about two thousandths or two hundredths, not two thousandths, two hundredths. So I'm going to start get set up and start boring for the uh, seal and uh, then we'll be parting this off soon. So I got to get you guys out of the way because I've got a new tripod coming. And uh, I'm going to be able to set you up over top of the lathe with the new tripod, hopefully. So, But until then, this camera's in my way, and I'm down to uh, ten thousandths of an inch is what I'm playing with. So if I get that close, I want to keep on going. So we'll be back. We'll get set up, and I'll show you where I'm going. Okay, folks. I don't know if I hit the stop button or the record button last time around. So I'm going to kind of start over. I've got my dial indicator set up on this face here and our hole was 2 inch .046 and I need to go to a seal bore I'm going uh, .220 deep so 220,000 deep and I've got to go to a diameter of 2 inch .445 so just do a quick check here and I am at about 2.190 so so we got a ways to go so I'm just doing 25 thou cuts or 50 cut thou cuts actually because 25 and 25 you always double your gauge your dial this, uh, folks back when I get uh, closer here I want to be able to see better and I'll be in front of you guys so you won't be seeing nothing okay folks we got that bore cut out that there will slide in there just needs a little bit of tapa tapa and that'll stay in there so we're good now I'm going to part this off I'm going to part this off for uh, 867. So I'm going to get my parting blade set up and uh, sorry for my arm. Of course, I'm in the way, right? I'll bring you guys in here and show you how I set a parting blade up so it's square. Loosen the tool off, set it up against the work like that. Take the back out of it. Okay, get you guys in there a little closer. Now I need a rule. What I do is I just come down the face of this workpiece like this, and right now I can go past my. So as soon as I get that to there, I bring my trusty dial indicator in. I'm 
lock it down this time. Usually I just rely on the magnet, but I got so much swarf around. So I'll check this again. I can slide by it. I can't slide by it. So right there I'm sliding by. So that is my zero. And now Count my revolutions. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I said I want sixty seven. So there we go. Okay, let's get a cutting. And just to be sure. There. Yep, that gives us enough of bottom. name on it. The cross slide up top. I don't want it moving because that'll take, because it's at an angle, it'll move my parting line back. Things broke up more if you see it hard. find some gloves. Okay folks, cut this turtle around now. Not a super fine finish, but I 
Okay, got it turned around here. Just going to take a couple edges off here. There, we are ready to have some fun now. Over to the axle we go. Okay folks, so that there, I got that started in there, but when I went to take the other one out, I used a slide hammer with a uh, clutch pallet bearing puller on it and if I jam this down to the bottom, there's no getting it back out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to put this back in the lathe and I'm going to open this up until I've got enough room to get like where my fingernail is right now. So I want to be able to get something in here, past here, and if it's right down against this surface, there's going to be no getting this out in the near future, so, or in the long future. Hopefully this doesn't wear out for a long, long time on these people. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chuck that up. I'm going to open that bore up. Uh, I'm just going to do it off camera. You guys seen enough boring videos. So we'll get this done and I'll bring you back when I can show you what I've got done here. Okay, folks, there's what we want it. If you've ever tried to punch a bearing out and haven't been able to get any purchase by going in, on this back edge you know how much fun it is so I just opened this up it's not a needed area the bottom of that was opened anyway so uh, yeah we're ready to go over the axle with this okay folks I set this up the depth of this bushing spacer whatever you want to call it I set it up for the depth of this landing that's right here now if we come around here, we notice that the landing almost disappears. I'm still on it with the pen. I'm still on it all the way around. But I've got quite a holiday below that landing. Uh, probably a good quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it off camera because I'm going to take and I'm going to lay in some JB Weld. Okay? All I want to do is fill this void and I'm going to fill the void and then I'm going to set that bushing in tight and I'm going to dig all the crap out of the bottom of the bushing because it doesn't need to be there. So I'm just going to put an overabundance, not too much, I'm not going to get crazy, but I'm going to put a fair bit of JB Weld down in this hole and then the bushing is going to go in and it's going to, of course, the, the JB weld will come into this hole and I'll wipe that out and uh, then I'll bring you back okay okay folks you can see how I packed the uh, JB weld underneath there I just want some support on the bottom of that because uh, I didn't want to take away all the material from this thing and be leaving it weaker than crap but uh, no nope. there you go she is ready for a bearing and a seal so customers should be pleased with that so we're gonna get things cleaned up out here and uh, go give them a call thank you very much Please like and subscribe. Keeps this channel going.